Thank you for watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. In our more than 70 years of broadcasting here at CBS 8, we've had some big names and big personalities, none bigger than our Larry Himmel. The only thing better than his way with words was his way with people putting them at ease, making them feel like longtime friends. Larry regularly featured different parts of San Diego and what made them unique, but they were all Himmel's neighborhoods. Let's start out with a group of communities surrounding Balboa Park in the heart of San Diego, Bankers Hill, Hillcrest, Park Boulevard, and Burlingame. It's one of this city's oldest neighborhoods, but many San Diegans don't know where it is. It is an inner city uh, secret, so to speak. Uh, um, it's not on the tourist map, happily. Uh, <laughs> or what it is, for that matter. But some people say, well, it's Mission Hill. Some people say, well, it's, it's the edge of a Hillcrest. But the traditional name is the Bankers Hill area. Some neighborhoods are on the other side of the tracks. This one's on the other side of the bridge, the Spruce Street Suspension Bridge. Built in 1912, this bridge offers some great views of downtown, and it's always a thrill to cross because on a windy day, this bridge moves. Interesting to go over. It's a lot different when you're going over it with two people rather than just yourself. You, know, you start shaking it and scare your friends. <laughs> On the other side of the bridge, you'll find one of San Diego's most distinctive neighborhoods. It's as if time stands still on Bankers Hill. Any minute you expect Wally and the Beaver to walk out this door. And this could be a scene out of Driving Miss Daisy. Bankers Hill was built shortly before World War I by some of San Diego's leading architects. In that era, they were setting the standard and some roots, the standard for the growth of the rest of the city back then. It didn't grow that way everywhere. It grew too fast. Nothing happens fast on Bankers Hill. Manny Oscar's home restoration took almost a year. It was a lot of fun, a little bit of aggravation, but mostly fun. And I, I would do this type of thing again, but my wife would probably divorce me. <laughs> this is just the best. We've lived all over. We lived in La Jolla. Pardon me, La Jolla people, if you're ever hearing this. <laughs> we lived in Rancho Santa Fe. We lived in Solana Beach. This is absolutely the best. Nothing like it. Bankers Hill, part of San Diego's history, that some folks are lucky enough to call home. Larry Himmel, News 8, Bankers Hill. Hillcrest is San Diego's most colorful neighborhood. And what color is the hair? Uh, blue. <laughs> A great place to track trends. How many uh, pierces do you have? Uh, maybe six or seven, I'm not sure. So you're not lame if you wear wingtips now? Not lame if you wear wingtips at all. Um, these have got a steel toe cap in them, just to give them that extra bit of oomph. Debbie, you cut hair here at Ralph's. You guys are the cutting edge of what's happening in hairstyles. Really, what is going on? What is the look? You have the look, actually. This is the look right here. Wow, and I got it in Texas. Tell me about a good selling cookbook here. Uh, this is hot and spicy and meatless. Yeah, I know why this is a bestseller, because of that movie Meatless in Seattle. <laughs> No, I don't think that has much to do with it. <laughs> okay, what we've got here is, uh, we call them icicle colors. Uh, a sort of pale uh, pink and an A-line sort of hip skirt with a crop uh, sort of mohair feeling sweater. Here we have the, um, an oversized uh, sort of retro cardigan. The Milwaukee, Wisconsin look. Exactly. We're kind of the headquarters for anti-Limbaugh books here in town. So yeah. these might be the last liberals left in America. Yes, right here. Not everything in Hillcrest is Art Nouveau. You can still find them dancing to the oldies at Corvettes. While at Arthur Murray's, they're on the cutting edge of ballroom. Yay, here we go. Hillcrest is definitely a neighborhood where you can dance to the beat of a different drum. It's a neighborhood rooted in San Diego's past, with a solid foot in its future. Attracted by the Egyptian architecture of the 20s, 
young entrepreneurs are turning Park Boulevard into a mini Melrose Avenue. Darlene Brill, who opened the cafe on Park one month ago, is the new kid on the block. One month into a new restaurant, is it a scary time? Very scary, especially going into December. It's very scary. On this block, Darlene's not alone. Most of the new business owners are young, youngish. Um, a lot of us are first time business owners, so we have a lot of energy to put into it. Patrick also has a unique marketing niche. Well, we have just a real wide collection of eclectic, wacky, zany pop culture gifts. Marilla Belsito has also found her niche on Park. It's mainly vintage and new clothes. I have new shoes from England, like Creepers, Beetle Boots. Uh, it's always been like kind of funky shops on the street. David Skelly's modern furniture store, Boomerang, is one of the oldest of the new businesses. When we all first moved onto this block, uh, it was kind of down and out. Um, so architecturally, it's a really interesting block. This entire neighborhood has an Egyptian theme. Oh, I see here, these are the Nile apartments. Uh-huh. So everybody in here is in denial? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> had to use that line. <laughs> Isabel Dutra also owns a shop on Park Boulevard. Um, we've been around for a year and a half, and it's a do-it-yourself dog and cat bath, and a pet boutique and a photography studio. Isabel knows that the shops along Park Boulevard may be different, but the dreams of their owners are middle of the road. Well, it's kind of like the American dream. I mean, people, there are young people who are coming in and making a go of it. And the dreams of this new generation become the hopes of an old neighborhood. It's a neighborhood of gardens and of fruit trees, of houses nestled in canyons, a neighborhood of manicured lawns and distinctive architecture. It's one of San Diego's older neighborhoods, but still very desirable. It's the mid-city oasis called Burlingame. 12, 46 and 47, yeah. we had the house built. All the dirty in there is ours. Oh, what did we pay? I think around 12,000 then. Yeah, if we owned the lot. We had to buy the lot. The lot was 3,500. And it's close to every place. You go downtown, you go to the ballpark, and get everywhere. It's calm. Uh, people are very friendly. Uh, the neighbors around here when we moved in were just terrific. I mean, they just came over and introduced themselves. We had a big garage sale. They bought all of our stuff. Character. I like older homes, and I like uh, quiet. And uh, there's a real community spirit here. It's Christmas time. All the Christmas lights are decorated between the palm trees, and everybody walks around and sings Christmas carols together. Most of Burlingame was built right after World War II, but many of the houses have been architecturally updated without destroying the character of the neighborhood. It's called Observatory House. Uh, basically because it allows you to go up and, and look at the world, uh, both inside in terms of the books and uh, from the top of the library. On a clear day from the observatory, you can see the ocean. On any day, you can see that Burlingame is a neighborhood with a lot to offer. No denying Larry's ability to capture the character of those communities. Just a little ways from Balboa Park, Mission Hills. Larry found a community rich in history, a nursery established by Kate Sessions, and some really, really good food. If this neighborhood was a song, it would be an oldie but a goodie. It is old fashioned. Our house was built in 1911 and I grew up in an old home and I love the old houses. Mission Hills is the home of San Diego's oldest active nursery. It was started by Kate Sessions back in 1910. She came up to the Mission Hills area and actually had quite a large parcel of land up here. In Mission Hills, you'll find houses with a sense of history and houses with a sense of humor. It's a great place to live or work. This is a great neighborhood. Quiet, it's got a school, a park, tennis courts. It's quiet, it's a nice neighborhood. And if you can't live or work here, you can always visit. I have a daughter who lives out, God knows where, in La Costa. There's no, what Gertrude Stein said, there was no there there. It, this, is, this is an exciting neighborhood. The Mission Hills Cafe is the new neighborhood hang. 
we wanted to create a place that was for the neighborhood, about the neighborhood. This cafe is authentic. They even have a French chef. So you are a culinary expert. Uh, let's say, put it this way. <laughs> and I'm a media freeloader. Can we get together? Why not? <laughs> Next door at the beauty salon, they're very friendly. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I won't talk to you. I'm not talking to you. I told you I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Aren't you happy? This is your TV debut. This is my best <laughs> angle, great. too. Thank you. <laughs> From any angle, Mission Hills is a great neighborhood. Larry was anything but a bum, but he really liked the beach and San Diego's beach communities. From what some call the paradise of Bird Rock to the fresh yet familiar feel of Encinitas to Carlsbad with its village at the heart of the city, Larry touched them all. Long ago, our forefathers, along with a few of our foremothers, first set eyes on this place. They saw birds sitting on a rock, so they named it Bird Rock, and it was good. It was very good. Well, it's like living in paradise. It's the nicest place in the world. Unfortunately, some of the cliff is going, and uh, we had a drop where I live, about 62, lost some of our porch. And eventually, we'll all be in the ocean, but we'll sure have a good time while we're living on the cliff. For those who can't afford to buy in Bird Rock, there are some rentals. This is paradise. It's quiet, spacious, and we live right by the ocean, so we can just go surfing anytime we want. Or maybe you're lucky enough just to work here. This is Ken, and he's going to give us a tour. What is this now? This is a. Uh... Sewer pump lift station. This one never leaks, though, does it? No, not at all. Never spills, runs perfectly. It just keeps working down, working down the coast till it gets to Point Loma. They treat it out to the ocean. We're going to send you a little something now, Point Loma. It's a gift from all of us at Bird Rock. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bird Rock offers many attractions. There are breathtaking views, tide pools to peruse, places to catch up on the latest news or just take a little snooze. Those who come for a day, or those who spend a life, both know that Bird Rock is one of San Diego's very special neighborhoods. Encinitas is uh, really the best of both worlds. There's always something new, but yet there's always something familiar and old and charming about this beach community. There are familiar landmarks like the La Paloma Theater, where you can still see a double feature for $3.50. The Panikin, where liberal speaking locals linger over coffee. There's Moonlight Beach, one of the few North County beaches that still has sand, a place where beach volleyball is a religious experience. Wish every day could be like this, but only about 99% of them are. <laughs> There is also something new in Encinitas, a restaurant called Shrimply Delicious, where food is thrown on the table and people pound their way through lunch. All our fish is live when it comes in the back door and then we steam it. Health food, we don't do anything with oil or grease or fat. So what we do is we steam. Lunch is served with all the peanuts you can eat. Just throw the shells on the floor. Encinitas also has its own B&B. &B. I have now five rooms that uh, offer the downstairs is like a three-bedroom apartment. And then the upstairs, uh, the large master bedroom, I have just converted to the penthouse boudoir. For Kirsten, Encinitas is a perfect location for a bed and breakfast. This is a quiet, laid back. Uh, the people like to claim it as in the 50s. They don't want it to be real modern and upbeat type of thing. But don't confuse Encinitas with paradise. I don't like um, the congestion and the traffic that is now here, but it's still a very nice place to live. Encinitas has everything a young or old surfer could ever want. 
It's always been kind of mill. Good pizza down the street. It's got lots of liquor stores. <laughs> what more could a guy ask for? What a life, huh? I hope it never ends. In Encinitas, some continue to search for the endless summer. When it's a sunny day in Carlsbad, everybody's on the move. We took this two, two week old out for a stroll, nice day today. This is a nice neighborhood, huh? It's very nice, yeah. We love it here. Some folks have come a long way just to get here. Yakima, Washington. What brings you down here for vacation? The weather. Others are just enjoying another day in their own backyard. Wonderful neighborhood. Well, it's got a really good atmosphere. Everybody's really friendly. I still wouldn't want to move anywhere else. <laughs> to some, it's paradise. To others, paradise lost. Real funky little beach town, and now it's trying to be La Jolla all over again, I think. Despite the growth, downtown Carlsbad has the feel of a friendly village. I'll let down your hair and I'll climb up. Okay. A place where total strangers will tell you their life story. Hey, Larry. Hey, Larry. Who is, hi, how are you? What's your name? Johnny. Johnny, who's this? Ted, Ted. Ted Berry. I'm a retired Marine. Johnny McKay got out of the Marine Corps in 1945. What kind of a town is this? Very good. Very good. Friendly town, a lot of characters, except for the two of us. A place where you'll find a barber shop where they still do it the old-fashioned way. Carlsbad is a neighborhood where you can still find a cop walking a beat. Well, this is a great town. This is a wonderful town. Where else can you go and get a shave? <laughs> That's true. Is it still uh, like a small village even though it's grown? I think so. I mean, we still have that friendly attitude. The officer's down walking on the street. I mean, what's the toughest call you've had today? Now you're going to put me on the spot, because actually I haven't gotten a call today yet. <laughs> Ocean breezes and friendly people tucked away in a North County village. It's hard to beat any day, especially on one like this. Larry Himmel, News 8, Carlsbad. San Diego is filled with beauty from our mountains to the bays to the growing skyline to our incredible beaches. But one neighborhood Larry found stands out when it comes to taking in beautiful views. Point Loma, where looking back at San Diego isn't a throwback. It's the slice of San Diego that is seen around the world. The serene bay reflected against the burgeoning skyline. It's a photographer's favorite captured forever on postcards and calendars, and on a clear day from the corner of Harbor View Drive and Golden Park Place, you can see forever. You can see the bull ring in Mexico. You can see Presidio uh, Park over there. You can see uh, the S Mountain way out East County. You can see the Cuyamac and, and Laguna Mountains here. And going north all the way up to Big Bear. And the folks who call this Point Loma neighborhood home drink in this view every day. And even on a hazy morning, the panorama is quite spectacular. It never gets old. It's just different every day. It's beautiful every day. And you just never get tired of it. George Dale has enjoyed this view since his parents moved here in 1922. My dad and mother walked the point. He was in real estate. Uh, he had retired from the Navy. and. <clears throat> He uh, and she walked the point, and they liked this spot better than any other. His father built the first stucco house on the hill. Your father definitely had a vision. Well, he really did. <laughs> Today, it's a vision shared by a select few. It's like living in the country, but you're in the city. And at night, it's just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. It's a great view just passing through. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. When you wake up in the morning and you grab the morning coffee and you walk out on the deck, do you say, life's been pretty good to me? Life's been great, <laughs> actually. This is, this is the number one area in uh, all of Southern California for me. For these Point Loma fortunates, their backyard is a picture postcard. Of course it's beautiful. You're looking back at San Diego. In the 90s, Poway may have had a bit of an identity crisis. Some like to point out it was its own city, while others embraced its country roots. As Larry found out, it turns out Poway had the best of both worlds. Its neighbor to the south, Scripps Ranch, is a community that Larry thought combined small town charm with storybook beauty. 
Do you like living in Scripps Ranch? Oh yeah, it's a nice, real place. Good place. What do you like about living in Scripps Ranch? Well, there's a lot of fun stuff you get to do. You have lots of neighbors around, and it's a good place. At times, Scripps Ranch looks like a storybook land. There are scenes out of Huck Finn and Sleeping Beauty. And just who lives in this enchanted forest? The tree people. Tree people live in Scripps Ranch because it's full of trees. Indeed, the trees are an intricate part of this community. They shield houses from roads and meld neighborhood with business park. Trees surround the parks and the ponds. We come out here on our lunch hours every day to see the ducks. We feed them. Do you swing? Yeah. And do you look at the squirrels? Yeah. Yeah. Community, spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like a little town. It's like living in a small town in Scripture Ridge. I live in Scripture Ridge and I work in Scripture Ridge. And sometimes I don't leave for a whole week, but I don't mind because I like living in here. Excuse me. <laughs> that was a good shot, Derek. In this enchanted forest, don't expect to find the dream team. No fouls in Scripture Ranch. No, 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 no fouls. That's Scripps Ranch is also the home of U.S. International University, better known as USIOU, who this fall will play against San Diego State in the Cutback Bowl. Scripps Ranch, the storybook forest where the deer and the tree people play. In Poway, the city continues to gobble up the country. New neighborhoods seem to pop up overnight. Yet there are pockets of Poway that remain wonderfully rural. Old time church spires, white picket fences, and horses give this neighborhood along Midland Road its country charm. We're holding on. <laughs> you kind of held on to They're your They're moving in, but we're holding on. Tippy Terrell moved to Old Poway 40 years ago. We were both native San Diegans, my husband and I, and um, we just kind of thought it'd be fun to get back to the country. I remember the, one of the most precious things about this was a great place to raise kids, and they could wander any place, and you could see them. On your mark, get set, go! In Old Poway these days, children mostly play in the parks, but the neighborhood remains. It's a great place to raise kids. A place where neighbors watch out for neighbors. Yeah, she's my neighbor. <laughs> You're watching out for it? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I think so. I don't want to turn my back, right? <laughs> One place where this neighborhood's past is being preserved is in Old Poway Park. The whole idea of the park is to re recreate the past and use it as an educational tool. On weekends, this charming park features a working blacksmith and a running railroad. The train is running on Saturdays from 11 to 4, and on Sundays from 11 to 2. Despite the encroachment of the city, there are still parts of Poway where the present is the past. No one had a better feel for San Diego and all of its neighborhoods than Larry. Thank you so much for watching this throwback special. To see more throwbacks like this on CBS 8 Plus, click on the News tab at the top of the screen. I'm Carla Cicchetto. We'll see you next time.